Hey guys, welcome back to Whole Future. Dr. Ben here. Wanted to make a video. Got a comment question about a new study that just came out, and someone wanted to make me to make a video about it. And so basically, there was a study that came out this month in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that basically says that children who drink cow's milk are taller than children who do not. And so, of course, uh, a sensational story like this is going to make headlines reinforce the myth that somehow humans are designed to drink the milk of another species even though no other animal does this in nature. And so this thing kind of blows up like wildfire and they say, oh, plant-based diet, like you gotta drink your milk. <laughs> and so uh, let's address this study and look at it. Now, if you pull it up, it's flawed right off the bat. Essentially, it's a cross-sectional study, which basically means not necessarily flawed, but it's a very low quality of evidence. A cross-sectional study is essentially a survey. It just, it's basically a fancy word for saying they did a survey, okay? <laughs> Which is not much of a scientific study. I mean, it's, it's a scientific study, but it's the lowest quality of evidence. And so, basically what they did is they surveyed these parents, is your, how old is your kid? How tall is your kid? Does your kid drink cow's milk? Is basically what they asked. And they found that the children who didn't drink cow's milk were on average shorter than the children who did, but the children who didn't drink cow's milk were only 5% of the study, so it's not really like a great sample size. And of course, when you do a cross-sectional study, it allows for all sorts of selection bias, and then you can do a cross-sectional study that shows that sex does not cause pregnancy. So the quality of evidence is very good. And even so, let's say, well, why at a certain snapshot in time were the kids who drank cow's milk you know, taller than the kids who didn't. And I think a lot of it has to do with the hormones that are in milk. Milk is packed full of hormones. I mean, this is a specially designed formula that is supposed to grow a baby calf uh, to maturity, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pounds within a matter of months. So this stuff is designed to make you big, fast. And so a lot of these hormones have been associated with cancer. I made a video about how the casein protein in milk associated with type 1 diabetes. There's all kinds of problems with milk, but yes, it may make you grow faster. That is why we're seeing that as the milk consumption increases, children are hitting puberty faster and faster and faster. I mean, there's, you know, young girls who are hitting puberty at like age 8 or 9. And so, the hormones in milk are causing people to essentially mature early, so they grow earlier. They don't necessarily grow more, but they grow earlier. I'll give you just an example. Myself, as a kid, I wasn't vegan or vegetarian, but my parents did understand that hormones in milk were a bad thing. They limited my milk consumption. They drank like organic milk that didn't have recombinant bovine growth hormone in it. Now, it still had all the other hormones in it, but I ate a low animal product diet compared to other kids at school, and I was pretty slow to mature. I didn't hit my growth spurt till I was... Um, 16 years old. I think in uh, ninth grade there are pictures of me. I was like five foot three. I'm six one now. I looked like I was like eight years old in ninth grade. I was tiny. I was like the shortest kid in my class. And I somewhere in between sophomore and junior year, I uh, had a huge growth spurt. Grew like six inches. I came back to school and all of a sudden I was one of the tallest kids. I went from being one of the shortest to one of the tallest all in a matter of like a summer. And so people didn't see the growth spurt happen. It was pretty astounding to come back and all of a sudden, like, I was tall. But I was, I was a late bloomer. And so this is what happens. And this is how a cross-sectional study that looks at one snapshot in time can bias the results. Because you don't look at the kid from birth to age 18 or 20 or 25 or whatever. You just look at one instance in time and you go, oh, kids who drink cow's milk must be taller than kids who don't. But you don't have the large-scale, long-term evidence. You just have a one-shot survey. And so that's what's beautiful about things like the China study, the EPIC study. These are large-scale epidemiological studies that looked at people's diets over multiple decades, like 30, 40 years of evidence showing that the people who eat the most whole, whole plant foods are the healthiest. They have the least amount of heart disease, the least amount of cancer, the least amount of diabetes, the least amount of autoimmune conditions, and a bunch of other problems. And so... The good quality evidence, the large-scale epidemiological studies show that a plant-based diet is the best thing you can do. You can take a little quick snapshot in time and try to play with the data to show that, you know, milk makes you taller, 
but uh, the evidence, the quality of evidence just isn't there. So if you have any questions on this, leave a comment down below. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. We've got more great videos coming. Thanks for watching, guys. I've created a special gift for you. If you're new to a plant-based diet and you'd like to try it to lose some weight or get help with a disease condition, this book is for you. It's my top seven tips for succeeding on a healthy plant-based diet. Yours free when you sign up for my email list. All you have to do is click the link below.